Okay, so now the peeling of all this. I know it's gonna stink. 3D printed this. Cat's paw, cat's claw. Cat's claw. There's also a, a brass version of this being sold on Kickstarter right now for $39. Hmm, I'm actually missing the two screws that hold the razor in. That hold it, but I shouldn't say I'm missing. I haven't bought them yet, because I just printed this. I changed the handle a little bit. Prete fancy. Does work quite well. But anyway. It's not over here. We wanted the knife, the razor. Let's just see if we can peel this without scratching the tar out of it. The whole point of this plastic is to keep it from getting scratched up. Not plastic, but this paper. Can you even see what I'm doing? Yeah, I guess you can. Holy cow, I hate this stuff. Yeah, I am not going to put all this on video, only because I'll get demonetized. Oh wait, I'm not getting paid, but I'm going to swear a lot. I'm going to cuss a lot. Yeah. I don't know why I thought this piece would be easier. I was hoping just to get one of them where I could show you. Let's go back to this one. I mean, holy cow. And yes, these are laser cut. And they are cut like, I mean, they're like glass smooth. Okay, well that was a lost cause. Got another little razor. Maybe I'll have a little bit more control. Oh, this sucks. Whoop, whoop, I think I got it. Once you get it started, oh shit, shouldn't have said that. Generally, once you get it started, it peels off pretty easy. That's what it'll look like. Obviously, I missed this little piece. Oh, I got the other side. Oh my goodness. <laughs> one arm but yeah somebody wanted to 3d print that that's that's a pretty basic shape several hole several holes screw mounts for the, the horns so the little horns in here they'll fit into these holes we'll get to that one <laughs> I'll do a few of these. I'm sure some of you have already checked out, jumped ahead. Probably gave me a negative because I'm not swearing enough. I don't know. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Definitely want to get it in as big a piece as you can because you don't want to go back and fiddle with these little tiny corners. Oop, I may have got somewhere.
Yeah, so once you get it started, oh man, those two peeled off. We'll come back, see if we can get them from the bottom coming out. Fiddly. Oh, I didn't even think about the letters in the middle. Yeah, we'll come back to those. I did get most of it. Just piece off my finger. And then they get these in the middle. The lines, the circle, the O and the R. Those lines ain't coming off. These may not come off. Oh, it did. Nope. Yep, there it goes. Trying really hard not to scratch it. The whole point of this brown paper is so it doesn't get scratched. Well, taking out the brown paper scratches it. And I did. A little scratch right there. Darn it. Anyway, there's our logo. The Free Nove. Novi. We're going to call it Free Nove. Oh, we got the other side. You can probably see me pushing a little harder here in these corners. The only reason I'm doing it there is I know there's going to be a screw that goes there. So if I did happen to scratch it, it's not that big a deal. I mean, it is. I mean, you don't want to scratch it, but if you do, that's the place to do it. And then the same thing on all the other parts. If you're going to scratch it, do it where the little screw holes are, so the head of the screw will cover up the scratches, if you happen to make any. This one might be the most tedious one. Well, I think, I hope. I say it came out pretty good. So, I'm going to do all the rest of these off camera. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to hear me swear. Most of it's unintelligible, unintelligible anyway. I get them all peeled, I'll have them lined up, and then we'll be back. The last piece with the sticky stuff on it. Now I do have to admit, it's not as bad as I initially thought it was going to be. It actually is coming off fairly easy. Just go slow, pop it off. The hard part's just getting it started. Once you get it started, it actually goes pretty good. Pretty sure that these two are not needed. And obviously, that's the face. Um, don't think that one's needed either. Battery tray. 
Yeah, I don't know where that goes. It goes to something. Obviously the feet, the legs, servo shoulders, opposite side servo shoulders, a um, couple of pieces, base, bottom, tops. Don't need this anymore. But yeah, there's the legs. I just got them all stacked together. And there's technically left and right. Flip them over and they can be whatever you need them to be. You can see they kind of curve in different directions. Oh! I think missed one. Wow! How did that happen? I'm glad I did go back to those. Right? Just goes to show. As good as I am. Not. I missed one. Just gonna kind of take a quick squeeze here. Oh, the brown. And the same thing with these. There's flip them over and they're the opposite direction. They're they're mirrored. Just make sure I didn't miss any more. No, just that one. Interesting. Well, you, get, you get to see how I do that. So up here where the screw holes are, where the servo is going to be, kind of just pull the paper back. If we're lucky, we can get it to come off in one piece. And we're not lucky. We'll have to come back and get that one. You just pull them slow, pull them even. And for the most part, it should come off fairly easy. And then this one, I'm going to do it from the hole out. I know the screw head's going to cover it. And then peel it off. Alright, so I'm going to have to go back through the instructions now. Pretty sure it's just a matter of bolting these up to each one of these. He like said, I'm pretty sure these three pieces were just the housing that they cut it out of. Kind of like model cars if you ever did those, or airplanes. It's just the part that went around it. All, right, all the nuts and bolts. Let's take a look at one of these while we're here though. Bunch of servo horns. I have no idea which one's needed where, but we'll come back to that. These are uh, definitely metal. That's heavy. I'm trying to see. I know it's a digital torque, but yeah, it just says MG996R. I remember right, I think the 35 ounce torque, if I remember right. And in most cases that is going to be entirely too long. Just a quick little squeeze here. So in some cases they'll bolt like this. And some you'll have to actually put them through. Operate. Well, I'm not going to force it yet because I'm not sure which one's which. But you'll have to feed it down to where these sit on top. But for most of them, I believe they'll be just fitting like this. I think. We will be finding out. And then the same thing on these shoulder ones. Hopefully they all just fit from the bottom and you don't have to go through. And this will be where the other one just kind of pivots off of it. It doesn't bolt into it. It bolts into this one. And they do seem to line up pretty much perfect. And then if it goes from the other way, you just flip it the other way. Mirror version. But anyway, let's go read some instructions. See what's next. I'm going to put these in the box. Just because I 
don't think I need them, but I might get rid of them. I might need them. Drop that one. Oh, I missed that. I was actually just looking at that picture. I was like, that actually looks pretty cool. Down here in small letters it says, wires not shown in the picture. So none of the servos or boards have any wires on them. They've all been cut off. <laughs> right here at the base. Or there were probably ones that weren't built completely. I don't know. Or 3D printed, maybe. <laughs> no wires. That's the way I want it to look. With wires. We will have wires. But I want it to look like there's no wires. We'll see how good I can do. Okay, so following the instructions, dumped out one of the bags with all the horns. We want this one. The one with the, the circle, the disc. Obviously this side that's kind of geared goes on to the, the servo. We're not going to force it on there now, but it's the side that would go on the servo. That part you need to keep facing up. Find the ugly side, whichever side it might be. Ugly side up. That little servo horn up. Oh yeah. And there's four sets of three holes. You need to use the middle one out of each of those sets. And the screw goes from the back side through it. And there's four in here, so we're going to use these four. We're going to use their fancy little magnetic screwdriver. Or not. Put it in. Seems to work best. Run this in here. Those screws are going to be really long. Before I crank that up in and into there. I want to check something. If it's these screws we use, let's just open them. Because it says they are M18 or 1.8. They are really nicely labeled. I will give them that. Those are 2.5s. Those are the little teeny, teeny, tiny nuts. 1.4s. nuts over here. These are the brass standoffs. These are the bigger lock nuts. Our M2s by 16. M1.8s. These are the ones we're supposed to use, I think. More spacers. Or standoffs. More standoffs. Oop. Another thing of nuts, bolts, nuts. Alright, so the nuts here. I think these are what we're supposed to use. Let me double check though. And yes, we use the 1.88s in the pack not the ones that came with the servo. Don't need this at the moment. Glad I checked that. But, do not get rid of or lose these other parts. You may need them. I don't know. Um, I do know this little black screw is mandatory. I'm going to screw that into here so it doesn't get lost. 
just finger tight. These little rubber pieces, they actually go in here. Oh, they screw them in right. There we go. Those ones are not quite in there. He's being argumentative. But anyway, don't lose the little rubber pieces the black screw put in there. Um, some of them you may actually use this little brass bushing goes to the rubber. I don't know yet. I haven't got that far. But I do need to go through every one of those packs, get this out to put this together. So whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to take all of these parts and put them in this bag and then I'll do that for all of them. And we'll come back when we're actually ready to screw these in. I won't make you watch me go through 18 bags. So it looks like I had misunderstood or mis was informed. These little screws, you do get extras. What you don't get extras are the servo horn mounts for the servos. You get one. But the packets that come from Freenov, is that what we're going to call them? Freenov? We're going to call them Freenov. Anyway, so here's the, the base plate with the six servo horns screwed into it. Pretty simple. There's four holes on the top, screw them in. While we were at it, because there are 18 of these, because there are 18 servers, servos, went ahead and did each one of the legs as well. There's one on either end, same four holes, same four screws, six times. So those are done. So now the next part, we have three left, three right legs. We also have three right or shoulders, three left shoulders, just mirror opposites. We also have three, and these may be backwards. And we also have three left ones. And then of course we bolt the servos in there like I was showing you. However, um, just because of my many years with RC helicopters, RC cars, RC robotics in general, I'm going to go through each and every single one of these servos and make sure it works before I go bolting it in. I'm going to be sure that they all work. We'll do a full swing left and right, center them, and then set each of the 20 servos, because we're also going to do the two mini ones. But we're going to have them all set before I go screwing them in. So when you come back, it should all be mounted in. Now the little rubber mounts are definitely needed. And then the, the bolts, let me double check. Yep, and that's what I wanted to check. They're the M14s. So these, these are kind of hefty. So yeah, these and the M4 nuts hold each of these on so that pretty much answers my question there those little brass bushings are for the smaller screws those little brass bushings will not fit through these bolts I was just going to grab one of those rubber garments at some point here there he is he's fighting try it again there he is 
So again, show you how that goes. Goes in there. And then that bolt goes through there. And you will have to thread him. That is going to be tight. And then of course I did that all ass backwards because he will have to be underneath. And then you'll have the nut on the other side. Alright, let's just pop that out because I did that completely wrong. I was actually just making sure it go through the rubber piece. Come on, there we go. Then that would go in there like that. I don't have all four rubbers in, so I don't want to screw it in. But I will show you that after. After. I <laughs> test each one of those servos and make sure it works. That would really be a pain in the butt get all the way done and one of the servos for whatever reason doesn't work Grr. and uh, we'll be back pretty much after I have them all bolted in I'll probably save the last one and watch me do it and we'll be back Alright, and this is just so you can see what I mean by using this to test each of the servos. I only have two, because I did one initially, and then I did all three of them. I also did test the two little ones for the head. All of them work so far. I have honestly not tested these two yet. So there I went into auto mode. That's where you can control it. Both are moving back and forth. That one sets it to neutral with this particular tester. This is what they call the windshield wiper. It just runs back and forth. But we want them neutral. It's right in the center. Only running them off a 3.7 volt battery. Not enough there to hurt anything. Now, that said, these are all metal servos, as you heard. However, there is some odd grinding noises they're not they are not the highest quality ones um, I have a set of Futabas in my uh, one-fifth scale Baja buggy car and they're like dead silent when they run and those are well the one is uh, I think it's 180 ounces because it's got to move the steering wheels then I think the one for the throttle and brake is 55 or 65 ounces you don't hear them run. You just zip, 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 zip. they're doing it. These, as you heard, kind of loud, but they're not carrying that much weight. Basically, carrying themselves. I had to make a little adapter. For some reason, I didn't have a battery small enough. Everything I had was 11 volts, so I just made one. It works. All the servos worked. No issues. I just wanted to show that that so far I haven't had any problems. Now we get to start putting them into these and into those. Oh my. Uh, so let me get this out of the way. Since you're here, I'll just show you. So this would be the left foot. It goes on like this. And three more nuts or bolts in there. That's way more than three, but that'll work. Two nuts. Four nuts. I do want to double check something. Okay. What I was double checking was uh, 
make sure they did need to actually be locked in from the bottom. And they do. Um, won't be needing that little one at the moment. So then each of these will have to be threaded in. And this is just threading it through that little rubber grommet. Not into the nut. No, I did not go all the way through. You can see I only went through part way. Because I think these bolts are big enough that if I try to tighten it after the fact, it might tear that rubber. And when you're screwing around this much, I mean, the last thing you want to do is tear the rubber. That'll just ruin your day. Especially in this case, we got no extras, no spares. So we'll just be done for the night. I'm just getting the threads to start coming through about like that. Same thing on the other side. It's a little Phillips screwdriver they sent. Yeah, it's cheap. You know what? It's magnetic and it does do the business. One of the nuts back here. And then, as I expected, I'm not going to be able to hold it. You know, actually, instead of using my pliers, they sent a little wrenchy thing that I buried in the bolts. Buried in here. There he is. I'm going to guess that, that will fit their nuts. Right. I had a hunch it might. They don't show anything <clears throat> in their instructions about using any tools. It just says do this, do that, do this. Then it shows a picture of before you start and when you're done. This little tool barely fits back behind there. And then only from my RC modeling and uh, helicopters, you want to make sure you're at least into the nylon. If you're not into the nylon, it's not going to lock. But you don't want to crank it down so tight you crush this plastic or crush the rubber. Because then it doesn't do anything. But you do have to be at least into that rubber, or not the rubber, but the nylon inside there. That little blue piece. The bolt has to be in that far. So showed you how to do one. We're going to do all of these. And we'll be back. Might be a minute. 